Hey guys, welcome back. The first thing you'll notice when looking at the BIOS for the Z97X UD5H Gigabyte motherboard is uh, when it first starts up, you basically come to this screen. You can select your system language, go to fast boot. Uh, basically, just a quick startup guide here. It's got all of the main things that the average person would want. And then you have these little tabs on the side. You see it kind of turns into an arrow whenever I mouse over it. And you can see here in the bottom left, it says this way goes to the dashboard mode. And this way goes to classic mode. Uh, again, when you first started up, you have access to all these kinds of things. Fast boot, time, security, integrated SATA controllers. Which uh, lets you enable or disable the integrated SATA controller uh, it shows the current state of SATA devices including options to disable ports and configure hot plug status I mean, things like that um, and then you have of course boot sequence startup options load defaults and then you can just exit of course uh, if you move over to the dashboard mode you'll see it's a really nice graphical interface to do most of the things um, that the average person would do and a few things that you know a actual that someone coming in here to overclock would do um, really my only complaint you can see if you look right here where the arrow is it, it's actually off by a little bit it, it's kind of kind of difficult to use the arrow I, I mean I think most people are going to use their keyboard to uh, move around you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard and the enter button primarily to access all the different things that you need to access uh, and once again you've got your CPU base clock uh, you know all the basic things that you would expect to find in a typical BIOS um, and you're able to change that all here you can see that I have it currently overclocked right now uh, the CPU clock ratio is set to 44. Uh, you can enable or disable the XMP profiles. I'm going to enable it real quick. There you go. And that's how easy that is. You just mouse the arrow down and then hit enter and you're done. Uh, not mouse the arrow down. I'm sorry. Press the down arrow is what I meant to say. Uh, and then, of course, you can go up here to frequency, memory, voltages you can change voltages here uh, most of that stays in auto unless you're doing some serious uh, tuning and overclocking go back up then you have miscellaneous you can set up your PCIe slots uh, things like that then you can go to the home which basically just resets this back to the top and then uh, your save and exit and then it rolls back around over here to the frequency. Of course, for people who are more familiar with, uh, like it says, a classic mode, a classic BIOS, then you just click that arrow on the right, and that takes you in here to a much more familiar BIOS. Uh, you know, at least for me, this is basically the kind of BIOS that I've grown up on. Uh, and once again, you have all the basics you've got your MIT up here at the top which you can see over here at the right it says show all information about MIT status and then system information BIOS features uh, that's everything from boot priorities to the boot up number lock states uh, security options you know full screen logo show things like that oops and then you've got peripherals you can set up your uh, which LAN controller you want to use. You can set up your initial display output. Um, oops. For example, you can use from here, you can simply switch back and forth to uh, your internal graphics for the, you know, whatever processor you're using or whichever graphics card you might be using. Well, that's not what I meant to do. There we go. Uh, and you can turn on or off your internal graphics down here. Just all the all the basics. Here's a Kingston DT HyperX 3.0. And uh, then you have power management tab here. And you can see power loading. It's 
you've got options to resume by alarm. Uh, you can enable that and then set it up to wake up day or hour, minute, second, you know, and you can see in the top right there, you can select the days of the month you want for the system to wake up. Um, for example, literally, you know, obviously without powering it down, if you put it in basically a sleep mode, then that's what that'll do. I leave that disabled. I'm not going to mess with that. I turn it on and off when I want to using the power button. Primarily, this is the tab that I think most people are going to use for overclocking and things like that, the MIT. You drop down advanced frequency settings, and this is where I did all of my overclocking. Uh, it's as simple as coming in here. You can adjust the base clock if you want to fine tune, you know, a small point here or there. Primarily, I think people are going to use the CPU clock ratio. That's what I've done. Changed it from 35 up to 44, which puts the CPU frequency at uh, 4.4 gigahertz. And then, of course, the this is also where I set the uh, XMP profile. Set it up for profile one, which is XMP, and you can see that that puts my memory multiplier at 2400, so that now my RAM, which is the you know which sets up to run at 24 megahertz. So then you've got that. Let me back out again. Wrong button. Uh, then you have advanced memory settings. If you want to come in and actually really fine tune. Um, and overclock your RAM you can come in here and you see it's got a bunch of a bunch of preset options for different popular RAMs I just leave that disabled because I don't have those particular RAM um, you've got memory boot modes initialization modes you can set up uh, timing modes you can put it to manual and go in and change you know clock speeds of the RAM itself and things like that I'll leave that at auto I've already got it set to XMP and that's perfect CPU core voltage control that's what I use for overclocking here it is so I came in here and set the V core when I was trying to overclock the processor earlier if I leave this at auto it would bump up the voltage more than it needs to it would kinda automatically bump it up uh, I want to say it was getting as high as 1.35 or something, which caused uh, a lot of extra unnecessary heat. So I turned down the voltage to the standard 1.25, and uh, you can see, and now I got a good stable overclock out of that. You can adjust graphics voltage, ring voltage, you know, again, all your voltages. Anyway, so you can see the CPU temperature warning, system temperature warning, uh, fan fail warnings, all these things. I, I've personally just left those disabled. That's not what I meant to do. And then you've got miscellaneous settings. And uh, again, that is your PCIe slot configuration, DMI Gen 2 speed, and this uh, 3D Mark 01 boost. So uh, I don't really need to use that. It just changes my testing of it. You can see again this is the Z97X UD5H. This is the BIOS version F1 and uh, that's pretty much about all there is to really take a look at. You've got BIOS features here. Let me scroll back to the top. Well, again that shows your boot options uh, where you can pick which drives you want to boot from uh, and things like that. So pretty simple stuff, your peripherals again, and uh, that pretty much gives you all the way around what we're looking at. And then again, you come here, save and exit, or you can exit without saving, or like usual, you can load optimized defaults. If there was a problem, it won't boot up. Maybe the memory is failing or the overclock for your CPU is failing. You just come here, load optimized defaults, and you're good to go. I'm going to save and exit, and that's just about it, guys. We're done. Thanks for watching.